Raise your hand if you love sweets. Come on, let me see it. Oh, oh, I love that. As you can see by my Winnie the Pooh tummy, I like me some sweets too. I'm just saying, all right, that's good. Uh, we're going to play a game. We're going to play a game, kind of see how you guys do with what kind of can do you like. And this is a game we do with our Sky Kids called Would You Rather? Would You Rather? All right, so I'm going to give two choices, and you're going to raise your hand which choice you like, and we're going through some candy. So let's start this. We're going to start with hard candy. Hard candy. Think like Skittles and Jawbreakers and Suckers, those kind of things, all right? The second choice you have is chocolate. Think Hershey bar. Wow, yes, Hershey bar, Reese's Peanut Butter, Kid Cats. Okay, <laughs> raise your hand if you would rather eat the hard candy, the Skittles. Oh, let me see those hands. Okay, all right, that's ready. Put your hands down. Where are my chocolate people? Where are they at? Oh. Okay, all right, okay. Okay, that was good. All right. Uh, let's move now. Not all sweets are candy. We also have baked goods, right? Baked, candy, baked kind of thing. So let's do this. Let's do this. Uh, raise your hand if you would like either a slice of pie or a slice of cake. Raise your hand for a slice of pie. Where are you at? Let me see that pie, people. Okay. All right. Okay. Put your hands down. All right. How about that slice of cake? Where are we at? Wow, that was almost split right in half. I love that. That's fantastic. Now, the last one we have, this is kind of an odd one, but it's like a real thing. Okay, it's the weird candy. These are the things like, number one, the sour candy. Think like warheads. Wouldn't really call it sweet, but it's still candy, still good. Sour candy or, or the spicy candy. You know what I'm talking about. We got a little cinnamon in there. We got some habanero and some peppers. If you know, you know, all right? All right, so where are my hands? For the sour candy. Where are you at? Let me see you. All right. Yeah. Mm, I love it. That's good. Put those hands down. Where are my spicy people? Where are my spicy people? Whoa. That. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Y'all are weird. It's okay. All right. Just saying. All right. Now, look. Let's just finish with this. Let's get it out of the way. What is your all-time favorite sweets? Whatever you want. Whatever is your favorite. I'm going to count to three. We're going to shout it out. All right. So here we go. One, two, three. Wow, Lord, did you hear that? Lord, thank you for making all the candies. That's so good. All right, now look, if you ask me and push came to shove, what is my all-time favorite? Oh, my goodness, let me tell you about this. Mm. My wife's chocolate. Somebody said money. Yes. All right, that's candy? I just had to. <laughs> all right. Oh, candy money. Great. Okay. It's all about this week today. Yes, I love it. My favorite, if I get to choose, is my wife's chocolate peanut butter cookies. Can I get an amen? Where are you? Where are you? Now, look, just the other day, I'm walking to my front door. The door is closed, and I get hit with all of the senses. Like, out of nowhere, here comes this aroma through the door of chocolate and peanut butter. I'm like, oh, I can't. I can't not go in. And so I can smell the cookie. Open the door, I go in, down the stairs, over in the kitchen, and I time it just right. My wife is opening, pulling out that fresh batch of chocolate peanut butter cookies. I can see the cookies. They're bubbling still, and they're gold and brown. Oh, I can see the cookies. I'm like, I want a cookie now. She's like, they're too hot. You can't have them yet. I'm like, okay, fine, fine. I went to the fridge, and I got me some milk. I got to have some milk with my cookies. I got a special cup, kind of short fill it. I splash that milk in there. I can hear the cookie and that ice cold milk. Are you there with me? Oh my goodness. I wait just a minimal amount of time. Those cookies are just, I could just reach out. I touch the cookies. I pick them up. I'm like, let's go. Got the milk, got the cookie. Here's my technique. I don't know about how you all do it. Here's what I do. I, I, I put that cookie in, in there halfway down in. That's the optimal place. And then you wait seven seconds, no more, no less. Seven seconds. That's a perfect milk to cookie ratio, right? And I pull that back up and oh, I am so blown away by all the senses this one cookie has given to me. I am in the presence of this cookie and I open my mouth wide and I slowly put it in and that first bite, oh, I float away to heaven. It's so beautiful. Oh, I love the chocolate peanut butter cookies. All right, now here's the deal. I didn't want this to end. I, I didn't want to eat just one cookie. But it did have to end eventually, right? You know where it ended. Three cookies later. <laughs> okay, I'm lying. It was four cookies. Because it was like, they're peanut butter, chocolate chip. I'm just like, wow. So, wow, so good. Uh, like, you all are with me with these sweets, right? We all got our favorite. I got my favorite. So we're going to talk about that today. Uh, here's the deal. I share my love of being in the presence of chocolate peanut butter cookies. Because 
super sweet Sunday is all about being in the presence of the sweetness of God. Turn to your neighbor and say, sweetness of God. Oh, we're going to get those senses. I love it. Look, here's the deal. We're together today as a family, worshiping, having fun, dressing up, getting candy, and enjoying the sweet morsels from God's Word, the Bible. So let's take a look at how God describes being in His presence. Let's do that today. So you have your Bibles. We're going to go to the book of Psalms, the book of Psalms. It's right in the middle of your Bibles. Just open that up. You'll see Psalms right in there, right? We're going to Psalm 34 is where I'm headed. Psalm 34. We're going to talk about the presence of God and how we enter into that. Oh, all right. Here it is. Psalm 34, verse 8. Psalm 34, verse 8 says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see. What is good about the Lord? And when I enter into his presence and I'm there with him, I taste his grace, his grace. That thing that you get without deserving it, that's grace. And that song, that hymn, God's grace is not just good, it is amazing. Amazing grace, how? There it is, the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I there it is. God's presence is amazing grace. I also like this. I got up this morning. I saw the sun rise coming up like, wow, his mercies are new every day. And I love being in his presence, seeing that sun rise, his mercies are new. That's wonderful. And finally, what's great about his presence, the goodness, that taste and see is God's love. God is love, the Bible says. God is love. Oh, the goodness of his unconditional love love through his son, Jesus Christ. It's amazing. Look, I've been following Jesus now 36 years, 36 years. At 17 years of age, I discovered this verse. Oh, taste and see the Lord is good. Look, the things I've been tasting, things I've been doing, the life that I've been living, it wasn't tasting too good. It wasn't so great. And then God tapped me on the shoulder and said, taste and see that I'm good. Taste and see that I'm good. And I went, wow, this is amazing. And I said to the Lord, you know what? I know. I know that I am a sinner. I know that I make mistakes. I know that I am separated from you by the things that I do. And I said, I'm sorry. Lord, I'm sorry for doing that to you. Lord, I want to receive that forgiveness. I want to taste and see that love of your son, Jesus Christ, dying for my sins, forgiving me so I can be with you and taste and see. And Lord, I am ready to make you the leader of my life. Oh, Taste and see the Lord is good. And every day since then, I've been reminded of his supernatural goodness and work in my life. God wants us to taste and see that he is good. The next psalm we're going to this morning as we enter into the presence of God is Psalm 141, verse 2. I love this one. Let my prayer be counted as incense rising up before you and the lifting of my hands as the evening sacrifice. This is really, for me, like a personal conversation. When we pray to God, we are having a conversation with our Abba, our Father, and it is sweet. That aroma of our prayer going up, Him talking to us, we can talk about anything and everything when we're in His presence. And I reach my hands up to Him in worship and in praise. Oh, it's wonderful. Then finally, the last verse in Psalms, about entering God's presence. Psalm 84, verse 10. 84, verse 10 says this. For a day in his courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. One day in God's presence is better than a thousand. That's a lot of days. A lot of stuff can happen in a thousand days. But one day in the presence of the Lord is better than a thousand elsewhere. Have you had one of these moments when you're praying and you're worshiping and you're praising and all the things that's happening and you're like, this is wonderful. I'm just going to keep going. I don't even know what's going on. Time just starts to disappear. What you thought took three minutes before you said amen, you look down at your watch and it's been three hours. Have you had this experience? I have had this and it is sweet. God just wants to be with me as I talk with God about anything and everything. And, you know, here's the deal. He wants to stop and give his full, complete time to you and me. The God of this universe finds you important enough to stop and to listen 
and to be with us. Oh, I want this for all of us. Neither of us, when we get together in this moment, God and I, neither of us want it to end. We want it to go on forever. These moments are so sweet, and God's been faithful to provide so many of these moments throughout my life, and it's beautiful. But here's the problem. Don't raise your hand, but sometimes I find this hard. Sometimes I don't always experience God's presence in this way. And I want to share this with you today. There are, in fact, many times when I struggle just to simply connect with God and be in his presence. There are things in my life that come at me and try to distract me from being fully engaged and experiencing the presence of God. For me, there's like three big ones. There's three big ones. Don't raise your hands. But like, are any of these three something you struggle with, the distractions in your life? Let me go through this. I struggle with anxiety. I struggle with anxiety. Author Brene Brown defines anxiety as a feeling of worry and avoidance about the future. Now, this is for me like personal, like God toward me. What is he thinking about me? And I get a little anxious sometimes, like how is he thinking about me? Like uh, I, I, I'm not sure he knows this, but I'm not perfect. I'm certainly not holy. And like he's the God of the universe. And how do I want to go and be with someone like that? And I get anxious about whether or not he even wants to know me now and wants to think of me now and even about my future. God, I want to enter into your presence, but I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect, and I'm feeling a little anxious about you and me being together. God, do you even want me? I mean, you know me. Do you, do you want me? Am I precious to you? As my heavenly Father, do you want me? I get anxious about that. It sounds silly when I say it to all of you, but it really happens to me. I get anxious. God, you know, I've done some things. I've said some things. I've even thought some things. Since the last time you and I were together, we were present together. And I'm just wondering, like, what are you thinking about me now that you know I, I've not been perfect? Is it going to be one of those things where I show up and you go like, hmm, I got this list of things. Let's go through it. And I got to tell you and talk to you. Maybe even punish you a little bit. And I get some anxiety around that. I get some anxiety. Is our time together going to be focused on you mad at me and punishing me for my sins? And can I trust you as my Abba with my heart, with my brokenness, and with my tomorrow? I'm anxious about being with God sometimes. And I actually, if I'm honest, I try to avoid him. I'll just pray later today, or I'll push play on the song, or maybe I'll praise, maybe I'll pray. Maybe I, I just, I avoid it sometimes. It's because I'm anxious. Secondly, I've got pride. I've got pride. Pastor and author Tim Keller defines pride as the illusion that people can run their own lives, find their own self-worth, and give themselves meaning without God. Oh, this is really faith. Me toward God, what I believe, how I'm thinking about him, and am I going to let him be the Lord of my life? I want to lift my hands in full surrender to God, but these are some things that I honestly I say to him. Some, Lord, I don't want to let you in to all of my senses, my heart, my soul, my mind, my strength. I don't want that. Lord, I don't want to allow you to actually lead my feet throughout my day. Lord, I don't want to surrender and worship you as Lord and King. Lord, I don't want to pray and praise your name. Lord, honestly, I want to be in control. I want to do what I want to do. You, you be God over there, but let Donovan be Donovan right here, right now. I, I want to be the one in control. There's a letter in the middle of the word pride. What is that letter? And that's me more times than I want to admit. So I've got anxiety and I've got pride and honestly, they keep me from bring, bringing myself into the presence of God. Finally, this is a big one, my unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is defined as a state of being unwilling and unable to forgive someone who has wronged you. We've all had this happen. Someone wrongs us. And this is really relational from me to you. Me to you. And this affects my ability to draw close to God in his presence. God, I want to forgive, but somebody hurt me even though I hurt you. I don't want to forgive them, Lord. I don't want to, even though you've already forgiven me. 
Lord, I don't care how heavy this unforgiveness is, like a pile of rocks that I'm carrying around, unable to do anything. I'm going to carry this unforgiveness because they hurt me, and so I'm going to hold on to it. And I can't fit into his presence carrying that unforgiveness. And if I'm totally honest with you, I've said these words. God, I'm mad at you. I'm mad at you, Lord, for allowing this to happen to me and for doing nothing about my problem. I've said those words to him. I know I'm supposed to let go and let God, but I don't want to. And I don't know how. Don't raise your hand. These are the three big ones for me that I wrestle with on the daily. On the daily. Anxiety, pride, unforgiveness. But the Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Can you relate to my struggles? These distractions and entering into God's presence? Can you all relate to that? Now, look, you likely have your own list. You could add some things to that that keep you from God's presence. Look, here's the deal, though. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. I believe in Jesus. He saved me. I'm a follower. I'm a Christian. And I want to do what God says. I really do. I know he invites me to be in his presence and to taste and see that he is good. I want this for me. I want this for me, and I want this for you. And I want this for our Sky Kids. Not just on this super sweet Sunday, but every day. So here's the question. 36 years I've been following, still struggling with these distractions. How do we get rid of these distractions and step into experiencing God's presence?